Hello. So I hope you enjoy the small break. If there are people in the back, you can still, there are still a lot of seats available. So let's start. So my name is Frédéric Rosa. Oops, I noticed I forgot to put my name on the slide. Um, so who of you attended this talk last year at Open Source Conference? A few people, a few hands. Okay, so this is going to be an um, ongoing talk, I hope, every, every year at Open Source Conference to see how we are, where we are with OpenSUSE and SLI, uh, how we cooperate and how we bridge the gap between uh, OpenSUSE and SLI. So I call this talk The Return of the Gnome Part 2, because I'm French, also known as The Revenge. We'll see for the title for next year. So. In the previous episode, last year, we talked about mistakes that were made when we worked on SLE 12. Uh, I will use uh, the GNOME environment as the uh, ongoing example, but then I will expand a bit, a bit further. Um, so for SLE 12, if you remember, so we used GNOME 3.10.3. Um, and we forked it. So we used a version which was in, in factory back then, and we did a lot of work on it. We did bug fixing uh, due to bug reports from our beta tester. Uh, we developed new feature, for instance, the Sleek Classic mode in GNOME Shell, and all of that, um, we never backported those features to OpenSUSE Factory. Um, and why we did that? Because we didn't have time. Uh, there was a lot of work for the development team at SUSE just to bug fix and develop the feature. We were transitioning from GNOME 2 in SLE, SLE 11 to GNOME 3. Um, and there was little time to do the to push everything that was done at that time to the version in Tumbleweed, in Factory. Even worse, at that time, Factory was already one, ve one major version uh, beyond the version we had in, um, in SLE 12. So we, Factory was already at 3.12, and um, SLE 12 was at 3.10. So we said, OK, we'll do that later. We'll do that for the next service pack. Then SLE 12 Service Pack 1 came out. So people had time to, to do what? To do bug fixing. Why? Because SLE 12 SP1, as usually, when we do a major cost stream, the first Service Pack is a consolidation release. We fix a lot of bugs which were found and could not be fixed in the um, GA release. And people were so busy that they didn't push their work on factory. So the history repeated again. And we said, we'll do it later. But um, last year we discussed about, OK, we need to fill this gap. We need to reimburse our technical debt, as some people say. So we wanted to make sure that the SLE 12 GNOME was in sync with the OpenSUSE GNOME. And our ultimate goal was to maybe share the same source RPM between SLE 12 SP2 and OpenSUSE LEAP 42.2 for the GNOME desktop. We were kind of there for beta 1, but not everything was there. So, did we succeed? Did we reach the goal? We did. We did. Oh, I see Dominic is not entirely in agreement with that. Um, we had three 
100 packages to sync. There was a lot of discussion between the SUSE desktop team and the OpenSUSE GNOME team. Uh, we did some, some internal tools to help tracking um, the differences between packages. So OBS and IBS are very useful for that. Uh, but we, we needed a way to, to present that to developers so they can easily spot, oh, I have these packages which is not in sync between the two code stream. Um, we also had some patches which were only enabled in, in Service Pack 2, so not on Leap. And funnily, sometimes uh, after Leap 42.2 was released, there were some bug reports on, oh, this doesn't work on Leap, but it works on SLE 12 SP2. Uh, we are supposed to share the same source packages. And we discovered that, oh, that's because there is a patch which is in both source RPM, but it's only applied on, on the SLE ver variant, because, yes, it seems to be something only enterprise customers re reach, and in the end, no it was needed on both code streams. So even if we didn't push everything and enable all the, the changes in, 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 in Leap, um, it still benefited um, both, cost, both code stream. We had, it was a difficult road. Bumpy, a lot of holes uh, on, the, on, on the road, but still. So we, we had to first do the integration, so the, the merge internally. So we, uh, for those of you who don't work at, at SUSE, we had um, a clone of the OBS, which is, we call the internal build service. And there we have the same equivalent of development uh, projects and stuff like that. So we set up a, a development project for the desktop. And we made sure to use the same rules as those which are used on the OpenSUSE GNOME team. So no direct commit on a development project using only submit requests, not auto accepting your own submit request, making sure that somebody else is reviewing the change you did. All that on the development um, project and then, only then, um, uh, accept things and then submit it to the to SLE 12 SP2. We had also some horror stories, Ludwig mentioned it uh, earlier today, about change log integration. Um, we have some rules on SLE that when you update a package between a service pack, you should never, ever, ever, ever lose a bug report number in the change log or lose a fake number or lose a CVE number. Why is that? Because just to make sure that, oh, we are upgrading a package with a new version of something, and then by mistake, uh, you lose a feature which was developed as a patch, or you use a bug fix which was specific to one customer, which was maybe never pushed back to, um, uh, to, op to, to factory, and then, it's very important for us to be able to track that we never regress in terms of uh, bug reports, feature, and security fix. And to be able to merge between the open source factory on one side and the SLE code base on the other side, we had to come in, in agreement, um, even if some fixes were never pushed uh, to factory, the OpenSUSE GNOME team uh, and then later the OpenSUSE factory review team accepted that we can push bug fixes which were at one point in the past merged back upstream but we still push in the change log very early in the change log. So we insert somewhere in the change log some entries to say at some, some point in time a bug fix was done and then a bit later it was Merge back. So we have the bug number somewhere in the package history and we can be sure that yes, it was, we didn't regress some, somewhere. But just to reach this point, um, 
was a bit painful internally and uh, with the open to the community. But we managed it. And we still have one pain point, mostly for the Leap people. It's when there is a package in Leap which has a bug or which needs some kind of updates, but which is inherited by uh, from Slee code base. There, uh, you cannot just submit something from OBS and expect it to be updated automatically on Leap. You have to make sure that somebody at SUSE is going to take care of this uh, patch, push it on our internal build service at SUSE, make it pass the uh, quality assurance uh, for maintenance internally for the sleep product, and only when it's accepted, it's going to be pushed back on Leap. So it's still a bit rough. Um, often people in the community have to find somebody uh, internally at SUSE to poke them and ask them, oh, can you please push this patch in, even if it doesn't affect a customer at SUSE, but only open SUSE uh, users. And, but in the end, everybody's win because sometimes open to the people, open to the user are just way earlier than customer and sometimes they find bugs before the SUSE customer find or report them. So um, it's still good that we integrate fixes which are submitted by the community. So I talked about SLE 12 SP2, that was oh, last year, um, but since then, um, let's talk about what's coming next. What's coming for SLE 12 SP3? For SP3, we have enforced, so Ludwig has already a bit mentioned it, but uh, I will go a bit more into details. Uh, starting with SP3, we have a policy internally which we call factory first. Um, this has caused a lot of uh, discussion and debates. Um, and some complaints, let, let's be honest. Um, what we ask with those guidelines is to make sure that when it's possible, development, is done, development done for SLE 12 SP3 is done on OBS. And by saying on OBS means is done for factory. And then, when it's in factory, it then submits it back to SLE 12 SP3. So it's not always the case. It's depending on bug fixes, if it's a bug fix, if it's a feature, if it's to implement a feature, you need to backport a package, a new, complete new package um, back to uh, SLE 12 SP3. But still, that's the spirit. We want to be sure that we don't come up with exactly the mistake we did. Uh, I explained earlier with uh, GNOME during SLE 12 SP0, meaning, oh, we'll do that later. Uh, because we know that we'll do that later may come back, uh, haunted you several months, several years ago. Um, uh, I probably already shared this uh, story uh, last year, but I will repeat it again. Uh, when we worked on SLE 12 SP0, we had some uh, people checking if all patches from previous code base were still applying. And we went back and found a package which was from SLE 9, which was always applying a patch for so SLE 9, SLE 10, SLE 11, and potentially SLE 12, where the patch was never pushed to factory. Which means that somebody uh, has done the, the work four times because he never submitted the patch to factory. And the patch was cleanly applying to factory. So by not pushing uh, bug fixes or feature to factory, basically people 
will make more work for them or their colleague or whoever will maintain package in the future. Uh, so it's creating a huge, uh, again, technical debt or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we really want to, to fill this gap and avoid, uh, avoid it as much as possible. So, um, so I said that as, when it's possible, we try to ask people to do development on OBS. And when somebody sends some submit request to the internal build service for Service Pack 3, we have a, a bot called the Leaper bot, Ludwig mentioned it, um, which is going to automatically check if this submit request is also present in OBS, so in the either in factory, then woohoo, it's fine. Um, we don't have to do anything. Uh, or if it's submitted, in fact, it's not yet accepted, but it's submitted, or if it's just submitted on the Devol project, or if it's not submitted anywhere. So basically, we have a package, we have a submission, and we have something completely different on OBS. And based on that, the, the bot will either sometimes decline the request, or add a all the time it will have some comments uh, to, to give some information to the developer about uh, this potential divergence um, uh, in the code stream. I was about to say in the force, sorry. Um, and this is very helpful. This is a tool which uh, the release manager can um, override. So sometimes we accept to diverge because um, some thing cannot be fully in sync for Fossley 12, but still uh, it's very useful. Um, on the funny note, uh, uh, don't repeat to anybody working at SUSE. Okay. Um, we get sometimes a reply from people to this bot and people explain why they are diverging. Also, if we would have asked them in person or by mail, sometimes people are less uh, uh, eager to share such changes, but because it's a bot, they feel that they need to, oh yes, this is a stupid bot, so I really have to explain it to why you should do it or why I'm doing that. Um, that's a good thing of having a bot doing reviews sometimes. People don't feel attacked as much as when it's a human which is uh, responding. Um, and yes, also one thing which is very cool is um, since we have reached a beta uh, cycle in SLE 12, SP3, every time we accept a package in the SP3, in the minutes following that, you get the same package and the submission is visible on OBS. So basically you can track what's happening on SLE 12, SP3 live once uh, uh, the beta cycle has started. So that's nice. Uh, I did some number digging uh, on, on the packages, bit, on Sleet Web on one side and Leap, to give you some hints. Um, so to give you an idea of how huge uh, Service Pack 3 is or will be, um, we, currently we have 342 source packages. So the way uh, uh, Sleet 12 is, is built is we have SLE 12 GA, and then on top of that, we, we have uh, modified some packages for Service Pack 1, and on top of Service Pack 1, we have some packages which are modified. So, um, you, the thing to keep in mind is that for SP3, currently we have 342 packages which are different compared to Service Pack 2. Service Pack 2, we had 1,010 source packages different for service, from Service Pack 1. Why is that? Is because Service Pack 2 was what we call a refresh release. We updated um, the kernel, we updated the graphic stack, we updated the, the desktop, and a lot of other things. So, so the number of packages we changed compared to Service Pack 1 was huge. Um, compared to that, Service Pack 1 was only 550 uh, source packages, so that's roughly the same, uh, same number as what we can expect for Service Pack 3, which we call a consolidation release. 
and uh, SLE 12 GA, uh, yeah, 3,000 uh, 3, 3, raw SLE source packages. But coming back to SP3, because we have some more uh, granularity on, the, on those numbers, thanks to the Leaper bot, uh, we know from those 342 packages, 107 are factory packages. So thir one third of the new, the, the changes in SP3 are, is coming from factory directly. This is the same package, same source packages. Sometimes maybe some fixes might only be applied for, uh, for SLE, but still. Um, it means that we, the development for SP3, one third of the development was done and pushed directly to factory and merged back and merged in factory, which is great. So 200, so the two third remaining, that they are what we call forked, but it doesn't mean we are completely diverging. Um, usually we have uh, asked developers to make sure they push the same change in factory, but sometimes we cannot upgrade if the version in factory is more recent than the version is service factory and we don't want to upgrade the version in SP3, then we just make sure that the same change is done on both SP3 and factory. But uh, yeah, one third, that's nice. So putting back that into um, a nice graph, yeah. SP, SP1, so I, I removed SP0 because it's not relevant, but SP1, five, 500 packages, SP2, 1000, SP3, uh, at the moment, 300. Um, yeah, we are, we are progressing. Then some numbers of, about Leap. So I will switch directly because uh, it's awful uh, to the, the, the graph. Um, Leap, I did some, also some analysis uh, based on, on the data uh, available on OBS. So for 42.1, we had about, yeah, 900, I think, uh, packages, a oh, bit less on that. Mm, yeah, 1,050, uh, one, 1,500 uh, packages coming from SLE 12, and the rest was from factory, mostly. For Leap 42.2, um, it's, yeah, it's visible. Um, the number of packages uh, coming from SLE uh, increased by roughly 300 or bit 400 packages, which is, uh, Grossly, the number of packages we have in the GNOME desktop. Um, so here you can see that the work which was done uh, by the, the, the desktop teams at SUSE is visible on Leap, at least uh, part of it uh, is visible there. And there is also factory, the number of packages coming from factory decreased a lot. Why is that? Because a lot of packages in 42.2 was inherited from 42.1, which is what we expect from Leap. Leap is a distribution where we don't update everything. It's not Tumbleweed. So you can see that almost half of the Leap packages um, in 42.2 are the same packages from 42.1, either the GA packages or the update, update packages. And currently, so I've looked at the number, it was on Wednesday um, for 42.3. Um, you can see that uh, SLE 12 packages are roughly the same. It's, uh, it's increasing a bit. Um, the number of packages from factory, yeah, decrease a bit. Why? Because we have now more packages. So um, the packages which are the same in SLE 12 SP3 and uh, in factory are counted here in the factory uh, uh, bucket. And then you can see that a lot of packages are coming from Leap. Uh, so 42.1, 42.2. So again, we are refreshing a bit 
in 42.3, but not much. So it means that we are able, we really are able now to, um, to provide to the community a good basis to do uh, a stable distribution uh, for OpenSUSE, and which is nice. So um, now I'm opening, I have a bit of time, not too much for questions, uh, just to to explain again that uh, all that I said about uh, the rules, the factory, uh, first policy, etc., we we don't set everything in stone. We are flexible and we, we are discussing with everybody. So if people say, yes, something doesn't work or um, how can we, can we improve the processes, uh, we are always open to that. Uh, and we are welcoming your, your feedback. So questions, comments? You can throw stones, tomatoes, whatever, geckos. Um, you mentioned that we cannot do certain updates uh, in the public build server instance, but only do it internally first. What's the reason for that? Couldn't we do everything? Couldn't we have a strict rule? If it's not in factory, it doesn't happen? So, um, could, could you repeat the, the beginning of your sentence because the audio feedback is not great. So, you mentioned that we couldn't do certain updates which are for customers or something in the public build service instance first, but do them internally. Um, what's the reason for this? Couldn't we do a strict rule, enforce a strict rule which says everything needs to be public first and then... So, so the rule is everything is uh, public first. But there are some exceptions. The exceptions are, for instance, uh, until we reach the beta uh, cycle, we have sometimes NDA with partners. So we cannot share publicly uh, work which is done until the NDA has reached out uh, its deadline. Um, Ludwig has already mentioned it. Um, and yeah, that, that would be the, usually that's uh, only issue and it's not that much. Also, we have some uh, legal restrictions um, because uh, uh, we are a company uh, also partially based in the US uh, and we are distributing things in the US. There are some regulations regarding cryptography. We have to do some paperwork and until we, we reach beta, we have not done the paperwork, and so we are not allowed to publish everything uh, outside. So that's something that uh, a company has to make sure we follow the rules, the legal rules, and sometimes community can be a bit more flexible. But again, the rule is we do in the open accept, and we really try to avoid the exceptions. One minute, otherwise Torsten will throw me out of the stage. No? Thank you very much.